What's up my friends? Welcome to another video. I'm Rob Stewart and I'm here to help you get your skin and your overall health back on track. In today's video I'm going to be discussing constipation mostly and the carnivore diet. I get tons of emails and tons of comments on my videos from people who are on the carnivore diet. They're doing their best to try to overcome eczema, dermatitis, or IBS. They're looking to improve their health. They've gone with the carnivore diet and when they eat the food their stomach, their digestion, their body, everything feels good. I had the exact same experience. Eat the carnivore foods, it feels like you're not eating anything. Major, major problem though for most people comes when the food's gotta leave the body. When you do the number two, when you're taking your poop. A lot of people are having great results, feeling pretty good on the carnivore diet, but they're having weird poops, constipation, bloody stools, pain, straining. Your poops? should be a release. Your poops should be pleasurable. You should look forward to your morning deuce session. So in today's video, I wanna give you guys a few tips and tricks to troubleshoot constipation on the carnivore diet. Hey guys, before I get started, just really quick, and I hate to be annoying, but if you're enjoying this content, remember to subscribe, remember to like, remember to share, remember to hit the notification bell, leave all your comments and questions down below. If you'd like to see my offerings, they're all listed in the description box. There's a consultation for eczema coaching. There's the three phases workbook, which is the skin disease reversal workbook. Okay, that's it. I won't give you any more crap. Back to the video. Okay, so one of the most basic ways to fix the carnivore diet, constipation wise, is to simply add more fats. Your protein to fat ratio can drastically affect your poop and your digestion. When your protein gets crazy high and your fat is kind of moderate, got a beard hair stuck on my face. Sorry about that. But when the protein's too high and the fat's too low, it creates glue and it creates big logs of poop that don't have anywhere to go and they don't have any lubrication to allow them to move through the body. So an easy fix is to get your ratios right, get those fats up, focus on the fattier cuts of meat, focus on eating more straight animal fats, focus on, like I said, the fatty fat parts of the fatty fat protein meats. When you get your fats high, it's gonna lubricate the body, especially the digestion. Fat also binds with toxins and allows them to slip out of the body really easy. You only have basically three channels of elimination, your poop, your pee, and through your skin. And if your fat is way too low and your protein is too high, all of those functions will be constipated. Okay, the second thing you can do is just stop worrying about labels, keto, carnivore diet, primal, paleo, vegan, plant-based. These are all labels. A diet is just food, it's what you eat. So if you're on a carnivore diet and your digestion has gone to crap, you're constipated all the time, you have to squeeze ugh, with all of your might just to poop out a dime-sized pebble, your health is not doing great, sorry. But if you've made awesome adjustments and you're feeling so much better, and you wanna stay mostly carnivore, cool. But who cares if you are full carnivore or 90% carnivore? Why be obsessed or worry about a label? Especially if you can make an adjustment like eating raspberries once in a while and all of a sudden your carnivore diet goes to the next level. Or adding celery juice or a salad once in a while to your carnivore diet. If you can make that simple adjustment and your poop becomes a glorious amazingness, then I don't see why you keep calling yourself a carnivore. Just make the adjustment. I'm not sure if you guys remember this or pay attention to the details in the way that I do, but even your boy, and I'm gonna say his name wrong, and he's my friend, and I still say his name wrong, Gaddis, Three Ridge, I'm sorry, I butcher your name, I can't say it, I have a mental block. But even Three Ridge, when he felt the need to get more hydration and vitamin C, what did he do? he started juicing raw oranges. He was full raw carnivore, and none of you guys out there said, hey, you're not a carnivore anymore because you were taking direction and taking his lead. So do it now. If you're constipated as hell, Three Ridge drink orange juice, add in some raspberries, eat a leaf of lettuce and see if it fixes 
your fiber free butt. When I put out my Rob 2.0 diet, basically the diet that I'm eating now, which is kind of like carnivore with the fruits and the vegetables that I know work really well for me, keeping my grams of carbs under 100, that's what I'm doing right now, and my digestion is super on point. I've had several clients and several YouTube followers and Instagram followers, Stuart Rob Stewart on Instagram, by the way, hit me up and tell me all I had to do was eat a little bit of fruit, like a handful a day, and add the celery juice in a salad once in a while, and my carnivore diet went from being really good but constipated to being over the top amazing on every single level. So they're not a carnivore dieter anymore. I guess they're called paleo or primal or keto or really who cares eat the food that you are supposed to eat eat the food that your body is calling for if you eat the food that you think you're supposed to eat but you don't know you're just guessing how do you know if the carnivore diet is even the diet that you should go for in the first place a lot of you say i don't care it feels like the right one and i'm just going to experiment with it cool kudos i think that's actually a great way to try things out experiment be open to the data and then adjust as you need. But there's a better way, especially if you have skin disease or you have a gut related disease or you're obese and you need to make an intervention to change your health right now and you don't have the time to just experiment. Most people do not do this and that's why they struggle so hard on diets. They never take the time to do phase two. Out of the three phases of skin disease reversal, phase two is the most important part Phase two is when you ask your body through testing, and I outline this all in the three phases workbook, you can get it at holistichealthactivation.com, but in phase two, you test your body and you do it very slowly. You do it once, you do it right, and then you never have to do it again. But if you never do it, you never really understand on a deep level what foods work for you and what foods don't work for you. So if you do phase two and you find out that your body doesn't do well at high protein and high fat, then the carnivore diet to begin with will be the stupidest diet for you to do of all time. So make sure you're doing phase two and make sure you're testing your body and asking it, hey, what do you want? What do you need? Let us know. Okay, got it. Thank you. Here you go. All right, my friends, and here's a topic that I'm gonna shoot some more videos about in the future, detailed videos. Um, and this is a trigger topic for a lot of people especially carnivore dieters. I've noticed that the vegan community is all cool with cleansing and detox, but the carnivore dieters, you guys out there, the second you start talking about it, doing an enema or doing a salt flush, you guys start freaking out. I'm not sure why. Maybe that's why so many of you guys are constipated like crazy, but it brings up a point. If you're doing a carnivore diet and you're doing it as a dietary intervention to revolutionize your health, then you should also be doing all the other holistic, natural hygiene methods to aid the diet, cleansing and detoxification, deep autophagy, coffee enemas, salt flushes, intermittent fasting, water fasting, the liver cleanse, those are the big ones. Are you doing those? Are you allowing yourself to detox and cleanse? Are you even experimenting with any type of other foods like trifala, which is a three flower blend from Ayurveda it's a tridoshic herb. It's so gentle. It does nothing powerful, but it if you're constipated, it helps tonify your colon so that you can poop easier. And if you have loose bowels, it tonifies your colon so that you have less loose bowels. So check in with yourself. If you're having a horrible digestion, are you doing anything besides your diet to improve your digestion? Deep cleansing, working out, moving your body. Taking a well-rounded approach is always gonna be smart. And so if you're constipated, check in with those things as well. Don't just eat more meat, more protein, more protein, more protein. Don't just keep doing exactly what you're doing and hope that things will change because you just gotta give it more time, just give it more time, just give it more time. That's true, you gotta give things enough time, but too much time doing something that's giving you constipation is not smart. Make the adjustment. At the end of the day, if you're constipated or you have diarrhea, if your digestion and assimilation is off, so is your entire health. If you're looking to have abundant health, next level health, transformation, going from diseased or unhappy or not feeling good to feeling awesome, then make sure your poop and your pooping experience is very enjoyable.
That's gonna do it for today's video, my friends. Please leave all of your comments and questions down below. As I said earlier, if you're looking to get a hold of me to become an eczema coaching client, to have me lead you through the three phases, there is a link in the description box for a consultation. Click on the link, send me an email, I'll send you another email back, we'll talk on the phone or over Skype, and we'll become best friends. It'll be really fun. Instagram, you can find me there. Uh, my name is Stuart, Rob Stewart. In real life, I'm just Rob Stewart, not to be confused with the beautiful, molded Australian guy, Rod Stewart. Was he Australian? I never get that right. Honey, was Rod Stewart from Australia? No, I'm not sure. I know he has an amazing haircut, though. Yeah. So <laughs> someone left a comment um, on one of my videos where I was talking about Rod Stewart. Um, if you guys know where Rod Stewart is from, for some reason I always want to say he's from Australia and I don't think that's right. I like his music, I love his dancing, his mullet's even better, but I have no idea where the, dude, where the, where the dude's from. He's got a great name though, I'll tell you that. 